Hey, I'm Reckless at Wonderfruit here in Pattaya, Thailand, hanging out backstage with Hearts. How's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? I'm fantastic. Yeah. Just played an amazing set. Your first in Thailand. Yeah, that's right. Any uh, impressions of, of uh, the country in general? Well, I like it. You know, it's a lot. It, it reminds me a lot of um, of India in a way, where I was born and things like that. It was particularly being out here, which is really nice. Like the festival is amazing. The way they set it up, the decorations, everything around, like the stage. Yeah, all the, the grounds are beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. All the crew was so helpful and stuff. It was just an amazing experience to play in Thailand. Well, congratulations, by the way, um, Guitarist of the Year. Thank you. That's yeah. fantastic. Thanks, yeah. And, and well-deserved, too. You fucking shred up there. Thanks. Man. And uh, I, I have a question. I want to know how Paisley Park was. Man, that was an amazing experience. It was. It's hard to describe because it's kind of more surreal to me now. At the time, it was. It felt like everything was normal, you know, yeah. kind of thing. It was amazing. Like, Prince was such a cool guy. He helped me out a lot with my... Not only my playing, my, you know, performance, my... The music industry. He helped me with a lot of, a lot of guidance. With my writing, my recording, he, he gave me a lot of guidance and, and stuff, you know, to improve on and move forward with and, and stuff like that. And he really kind of mentored me for that week. It was only after I got home that I started to think, like, <laughs> did that just happen? <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty surreal. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it was an amazing experience. He's been helping me, you know, behind the scenes since then, and it's been amazing. Oh, you do all yeah, your own yeah. uh, recording. Yeah, that's right. And you left. Um, I was it was Island, right? Island Records, Universal. Yeah. And you wanted to go back, have a little bit more freedom. That's right. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a little. It wasn't that I didn't have freedom on an Island because I did, but um, it was a little more that the schedule of working with a major label is a lot different to doing things independently. I just couldn't like release the tune. I had so much material ready to go. I couldn't really release it because there's a lot of things they have to do in terms of scheduling and things like that to get a release out. That type of model, that major label model didn't work for me at that time so I really wanted to get back to being independent and just literally like once the song's done put it up the next week release yeah. it that quickly and, and put out more music because I think that was what was really keeping me back for a while because I was so you know into writing and I had so much tunes ready to go I just wanted to put out an album I wanted to put out more music and that's a little hard to do once you know there's a big company involved so yeah I just made the switch to go independent yeah good call yeah I, I it, it worked so I was, I was happy I ended up getting you know more audience and more fan base because of that and stuff yeah nice. do you ever need outside ears uh, I know a lot yeah. of artists have a hard time knowing exactly when something is done because you can fiddle with it and play with it almost forever yeah that's that's one of the hardest things I have like just part of my character I'm just never letting go of things because I just never know when it's done sometimes sometimes I know like for sure because you just kind of have to abandon it and just say all right, that's that's done, kind of thing. But yeah, it's hard to move away from that. But I do get a lot of help from friends and a lot of um, you know guidance. A that's lot of a people that have been helping me, you know, behind the scenes with 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 that sort of stuff, just like an extra pair of ears. Because a lot of the times, like particularly with the Prince scenario, um, I didn't really know how good of a song uh, Red and Blue was off the first album. I just thought it was just like a not a filler, but like just a, one of those cool album tracks. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he heard it, he just flipped out over it and he was like you got to do that as a single kind of thing you got to that that's that's the one and then we did it as a single and yes, it just sir. blew up yeah. so it's like you know sometimes i don't know myself and and you know people in around me and stuff like that we can't we can't really gauge until we get someone completely out to to really come in and and, and say oh you know what's what's working what's you know not so strong as the rest of the stuff and that was something that led to my more guitar playing based songwriting and mm -hmm. not um kind of the funky kind of electro pop I was doing earlier it kind of just resonated with people a lot more that to see me as a guitarist and, and a lot of my guitar work more you know in the front and center yeah so that was one of the shifts that I made in, in terms of that from out, outside kind of um, feedback it was a pleasure to meet you, yeah, you too, have a happy you. holiday can't wait to hear the new record yeah thank you thanks for the opportunity cheers brother